Hello folks, it's Charlie Nuestros here, and originally I wasn't going to do another theory type video right away, but I figured this is one topic I could handle in a shorter video. That is, I will be exploring some of the alternate theories surrounding Daenerys Targaryen's birth. As many of you know, Danny is perhaps one of my personal favorite characters in Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire, and while I don't necessarily agree with all of the alternate theories out there, I figured it's about time I devote a video to a portion of her story. I will start by giving the facts, or at least what we are told about her early childhood, before exploring a few theories out there on her birth, and then present some of the major flaws and criticisms against them. And as always, I will end this video with my own personal thoughts and opinions on the topic at hand. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into this one. From what we know, Daenerys is the only daughter and youngest child of King Aerys II Targaryen and his sister wife, Queen Rhaella. She was conceived during the last month of Robert Baratheon's successful rebellion against the Targaryen dynasty, after Queen Rhaella was sent with the young Prince Viserys to the family's ancestral seat of Dragonstone to escape the sack of King's Landing, Daenerys was born whilst a great storm raged above the island, apparently sinking the remaining Targaryen fleet, and as a result she is sometimes referred to as Daenerys Stormborn. Her mother reportedly died in labor, but she supposedly named her daughter before passing away. By this time, Robert Baratheon had already claimed the Iron Throne, and the Mad King Aerys Targaryen was long dead. The years which followed Danny's birth, up until her betrothal to Khal Drogo, were relatively turbulent. Sir Willem Derry and several other loyal Targaryen retainers smuggled Danny and her brother into exile, reportedly sailing to the free city of Bravos, where they lived for a few years in a big house with a red door. Daenerys had her own room there, and a lemon tree grew outside her window. One of the rooms also had great wooden beams with carved animal faces adorning them. This location is significant in the books, as it seems to represent the closest concept of a home for Danny. When she was five years old, her guardian, Sir Willem, fell ill, and slowly wasted away. Following his death, the servants he had hired stole all they could from the house. The young Targaryens were put out of their home shortly thereafter. Danny apparently wept as they were forced out, and so for the years which followed Sir Willem's death, Viserys and Daenerys wandered the nine free cities of Vesos, trying to raise support to retake the Iron Throne. They eventually found the help they sought in the free city of Pentos in the form of Illyrio Mopatis, who, as we know, arranged the marriage of Daenerys Targaryen to the Dothraki horse lord, Khal Drogo. Evidently, I included quite a few details surrounding the early years of Danny's life, and on the surface, her birth and childhood appear to be set in stone. Nevertheless, many have questioned the events surrounding her creation for a few reasons. As such, I think this is a good point to jump into the alternative theories surrounding her birth and give a complete breakdown of the evidence in favor and against them. Perhaps one of the more popular and older alternate theories surrounding Danny's birth involves the notion that she is in fact the daughter of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark, in some cases as their only child, or as a sibling to Jon Snow, and also either as a twin or a younger sibling to him. While on the surface this appears to come out of left field, there are a few pieces of evidence others, including some of my own fellow YouTubers, have cited in order to posit this theory. That is, the single most prominent point people raise in terms of Danny's birth has to do with that enigmatic lemon tree which stood outside of her window in Bravos. As the argument goes, because Bravos is a rather foggy region and there are reportedly no trees to be found within the city, except in the courts and gardens of the mighty, the notion that a lemon tree would grow outside Danny's window in Bravos seems rather suspect. Given that lemon trees in a medieval setting are typically only able to thrive in warmer climates, this has led many to question whether Danny was actually living elsewhere than in Bravos during her youth. So the argument goes, the warm climate of Dorne is seen as one of the few viable confirmed locations in Westeros where lemon trees grow, and as a result, Danny must have lived a portion of her childhood there. Continuing with this train of thought, if Danny lived a portion of her youth in Dorne, then surely she must have also been born somewhere in that region. And this is why some have suggested the Tower of Joy is in fact her true birthplace. This theory sort of diverges into two trains of thought, 
where one group speculates that Danny and John were both born to Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar, either separately or as twins, and because of the girl's more Targaryen-esque features, she couldn't not have been brought back north with Ned, and as a result was left somewhere in the south for a number of years, before being smuggled to Essos with Viserys. The second train of thought, meanwhile, suggests that a sort of baby swap occurred, where Danny, as the daughter of Rhaegar and Lyanna, was switched with Jon Snow. After venturing from the Tower of Joy to the Danes at Starfall, Ned would have supposedly exchanged Danny with Jon, the suspected child of Ashara Dane, the Dornish noblewoman who Ned Stark was apparently in love with, and from Dorne. And then Danny was later sent to Essos for fear of Robert Baratheon discovering this daughter of Rhaegar's in Westeros. Of course, this theory presupposes that either Ned is Jon's father in union with Ashara, or his brother Brandon was their father, considering many fans do suspect he is the one who had sex with Ashara during the earlier tourney at Harrenhal. This theory also in part explains why Ned was so adamant in protecting Danny from Robert Baratheon in the first book and season in the series, seeing as she would be his niece, and it also seeks to expand on Quaithe's role and statements towards Danny when she tells her throughout the books to, quote, remember who you truly are, by reinterpreting it to mean that Danny truly has forgotten who her real parents are. Now, with all the contextual evidence provided, let's look at the criticisms this theory generally entails. I think it's important to focus first on the biggest piece of evidence and contention towards R plus L equals D, and that is the lemon tree outside of Danny's window. While it is certainly strange for a lemon tree to grow in Bravos, critics of this theory are quick to point out the fact that it is not altogether impossible, since we discover in Book 4 that, while, quote, trees did not grow in Bravos, they certainly do in the courts and gardens of the mighty. Given the fact that we are also told Daenerys lived in a big house with servants in Braavos, and that in Book 5 Quentin Martell informs her that while the two Targaryens lived there, a secret pact was signed by Sir Willem and Oberyn Martell with the Sea Lord of Braavos as a witness. The pact would have promised that if Viserys were to wed Ariane Martell, daughter and heir to Prince Duran Martell, Viserys would receive Doran's aid in placing him upon the Iron Throne. The fact that the actual Sea Lord of Bravos was the witness would also indicate the fact that Danny was likely living within the courts and gardens of the Mighty. Now, why the so-called Mighty of Bravos didn't even attempt to help the Targaryens once their retainer Sir Wellum died is a good question, but given the emphasis on Bravos as a banking nation which valued monetary wealth, it could very well be that the Targaryen children lost any superficial meaning once their ex-servants stole most of their possessions upon Sir Willem's death, and would have been perceived to be as good as dead without an adult figure to support them. They could also have become more of a burden than useful to Bravos, especially if Robert Baratheon got wind of their presence there. But again, this is all just suppositions, and it is still unknown if there even were any Bravosi who eventually helped the Targaryen children venture to another free city instead. Another more prominent piece of evidence used to disprove R plus L equals D is the timeline issue. While George R. R. Martin has admitted to being a little shaky when it comes to drawing a proper timeline for a series, the fact that Danny is stated to have been born some nine months after the sack of King's Landing, and therefore some nine months after Lyanna's death, would equally discredit this theory. Granted, one might argue the fact Danny was born at Dragonstone and her actual date of birth are both red herrings, it does seem unlikely considering how significant the apparent time of her birth was. She was nicknamed Stormborn for a reason, and given the amount of witnesses at Dragonstone during her reported birth, it seems unlikely that so many people would be able to convincingly fabricate such an elaborate story about her birth. And this also brings me to the fact that her brother Viserys would have also been present. Certainly, the argument that Viserys was too young to properly recall Danny's birth, or may have reimagined it, or might have even lied about it are possible, but this equally seems unlikely. Even if Danny were born to Rhaegar Targaryen and posed a superficial threat to Viserys' claim to the Iron Throne by her birth to an older male prince, it seems unlikely considering the set precedent that Targaryen women aren't allowed to inherit the throne before and above a male relative. Granted, this could potentially change given the current events transpiring in A Song of Ice and Fire. Of course, this doesn't even account for the fact that she could very easily be perceived as illegitimate as well, since it is unknown if Rhaegar even married Lyanna in the first place. 
Regardless of these aforementioned arguments, the notion that Viserys wouldn't have remembered Danny's birth also seems like a bit of a stretch. He would have been eight years old at the time of her birth, and speaking for myself, I can quite vividly remember things going on when I was that age, whether it be Bill Clinton's sex scandal to Princess Diana's death, or even weddings and births in my own family. I think an eight-year-old should be more than capable of remembering the birth of his own sister. In spite of all these criticisms, this theory is an intriguing one and certainly merits looking at with a degree of interest. Anyway, let's move on to another theory. An alternative and less well-known idea out there surrounding Danny's birth is one which actually proposes that Rhaegar and Ashara are Danny's parents. Now, this one is certainly much less popular or even all that well-known, and while the infamous lemon tree issue plays its part in this theory, it largely relies on the fact that in Book 5, Barristan Selmy remarks on the striking resemblance between Danny and Ashara Dane as the main source of proof. Other facts used to support this theory include the close proximity Rhaegar had to Ashara, given that she was a lady-in-waiting to his wife, Elia Martell, and given his infidelity by having an affair with Lyanna, what's there to stop him from seducing Ashara Dane as well, after all? This theory also attempts to make links between a Daenerys Targaryen of some 100 years ago with the current one, as the former in fact married the Prince of Dorne at the time, and since the Danes are a Dornish house, it would be an interesting parallel if the current Daenerys was born from the union of a Dornish person and a Targaryen. One thing this theory also typically does is link up the notion that because Ashara was Danny's mother, Quaithi must also be Ashara Dane, and this is why she is trying to help protect the Targaryen princess from her enemies. Now, with all that in mind, there is obviously much more to say in terms of criticizing this theory than supporting it. In terms of the resemblance aspect, one could look to the fact that Arya Stark herself, while a true-born daughter of Ned Stark and Catelyn Tully, is teased a fair bit by Sansa in the first book for looking less like her mother and her siblings, and told that because of this, she is a bastard like Jon Snow. This demonstrates that resemblance to a parent of the same gender isn't an essential aspect in determining a connection between them, but that is just scratching the surface. Along with the many criticisms brought up with respect to this theory, the main issue is that there is basically no indication or any inkling of a hint given to indicate that Rhaegar and Ashara had really anything to do with one another. While this theory is a fun one to think about, it does sort of come out of left field, and as we have come to find out, George R. R. Martin does like to provide some hints or clues in predicting events to come. Well, folks, we've come to that point in my discussion where I share my own opinion on the topic at hand. While I normally like to bring something new to the table, I really don't have much to say on this one. Whilst I like the idea of Danny being the potential daughter of Rhaegar and Lyanna, my hunch is that it is still too much of a stretch, especially if we use the TV show as a litmus test of sorts in deciding how the books might play out. Certainly, I will maintain many key aspects of the show and books will be and are very different from each other, but I do think there are some things that are just too significant to change, and this includes the parentage of Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. After all, there comes a point when all this baby-swapping talk becomes just a little silly. Nevertheless, I do agree that the whole lemon tree fiasco is a significant element to consider in discussing Danny's upbringing. Where my opinion diverges slightly from many theorists out there, however, is that I think we are already informed of the tree's significance. That is to say, it reinforces the fact that for the very early years of her life, Daenerys had a prosperous, comfortable, and happy upbringing, as exemplified by her cheerful memories with Sir Willem Derry, and the idea that she links her understanding of a home to that red door of the house she lived in for some time. Another important factor to consider, and admittedly I have heard this comparison made somewhere else, is the idea that the lemon tree, or lemons in general, could sort of represent a sense of innocence or childishness in A Song of Ice and Fire. Sansa Stark has a certain childlike fondness for lemon cakes, and lemon trees certainly don't grow in winter, so I think something can be said in using this fruit as a symbolic image for those qualities linked with a happy, warm childhood. Now here's the really important part, folks. I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think Danny truly is the daughter of Rhaegar and Lyanna, Rhaegar and Ashara, or even two other individuals entirely? If so, let me know why you think so. Certainly, I could very well have missed some important details, so please feel free to share your ideas. Anyway, that's all for today. I will be coming out with some more Game of Thrones videos, including a series on Rhaegar Targaryen, as well as some content on real-world myths and legends. 
And of course, I will try to complete some more videos on the Shannara Chronicles later on. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed. And I will see you all next time.